This program is intended for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. Now, I'll never be a teen model. I'll never be anything. What's the point in living? I might as well die. It's the Hard Fry Podcast. <laughs> I'm here with Michael Combs, who, might I say, is full of vodka and no food. Hi, Michael. Hey. And we have Mike Mark, Mike <laughs> Martin. See, so he can't even say my name. Can't even talk. Hi, Doug. Keith Clanton over here. <laughs> How's it going, y'all? How's your mom and them? Oh my gosh, we are back with episode three of our queer horror series. I almost said Southern horror because that's what we did last <laughs> season, but we're moving on to bigger and better things. Um, we'd love for y'all to follow along with us, so please be sure to give. Um, this season's movie listing, a peep over at the Horrified Podcast on Instagram. I can't talk either, and I haven't even had anything to drink. Anyway, come sit a spell. Let's chat about Fear No Evil. Alexandria High School, class of 81. All the students are going to hell, except for Andrew. He sent them there. It'll scare the devil out of you. Released in 1981, written and directed by Frank Lalogia, <laughs> the Bigelow from New Jersey. I don't know what I don't know how to say his last name. Um, and starring Stefan Arngrim, Elizabeth Hoffman, Kathleen Rowe McCallan, and Frank Burney, among a lot of other people who I don't remember. Michael? Yes, sir. You want to kick us off? I would love to. Yay! Like a few movies we've done, I don't feel like this has a typical three-arc narrative, so I'm going to do what I think yeah. Well, can I just is. say something really quick? Yeah. It doesn't really make a lot of sense at all. It doesn't. No. I agree with you. I think this is going to be a fun episode. I should be. <laughs> <laughs> so our movie opens with a priest killing lucifer who is in a human body mm -hmm. and then we flash forward to 1963 where a baby named andrew is born and then we flash forward again to 18 years later where andrew is uh celebrating eight, his 18th birthday which is also his senior year of high school and i'm gonna leave it at that okay well i'll just say when the movie started with all this talk about lucifer and the final confrontation i thought well I rarely understand anything religious, so this is going to be a doozy. <laughs> I, I think it's also worth mentioning. Let me just go ahead and disclaimer this episode for me. I didn't know who the fuck anybody was for about half of the movie. <laughs> no character. <laughs> in, can I tell you, in my notes, the only person that I refer to by character is Andrew, and the rest of them I have nicknames for, <laughs> because I don't know any of their names. Well... And I felt like there were two people named Margaret. Am I crazy? I thought the old lady's name was Margaret, and I thought his mom's name was Margaret. And I kept getting it, very confused. So his mom was Marion. Well, fuck me. Okay, Marion. <laughs> <laughs> but I was getting real confused about which one of these archangels was in whose who was body. Who? Oh, God, it was so, a lot. Because like, you kept hearing all these voices like Mikael and... Raphael and who's Gabrielle Gabriel. and yeah. which Ninja Turtle are y'all supposed to be? <laughs> like it was a lot, oh, right? It was. Okay, yes. I'm glad I wasn't the only. I had a really hard time following who was supposed to be who, and then when they were in their human form, nobody had a name. I mean, you got uh, asshole douchebag. You've got potato, potato face. face. You've I remember got, saying that. I mean, you got Queen Bee. I do, I do remember the character Brenda because he calls her by her name at the end. Okay. Asshole douchebag. Anyways, I don't want to get jump ahead of myself, but it was really hard to I know. Follow. We are right out the gate. So. Really hard to follow. <laughs> um, I also wanted to make mention of, you know, baby Andrew's baptism. I don't understand the blood. It just looks everywhere. like people were stomping on ketchup packets. <laughs> <laughs> there was blood everywhere. No, like it made no sense. Okay, so... In my notes, with that whole, I literally have baptism. What the hell just happened? 
<laughs> like I don't even know. I was like, oh, oh, I don't know. I don't. I was like, did the yeah, it, one saying. time I thought the baby like shit himself <laughs> because it was like it's orange like, or brown. Yes. Well, that's what I'm saying. It was like, okay, I get it's supposed to be blood, but it doesn't make sense. Like somebody gets like a blood squirt on the cheek. And the chest. And, and these the are like dripping off. And that's why I said, yeah. who is stepping on ketchup packages? <laughs> They're in the food court at the mall, apparently, all doing I this can, baptism. All I can think of is maybe because he is Lucifer incarnate. Wasn't back in Egypt, there was like the plagues, and one of them was it rained blood. That's all I can think of. Well, that's it was not raining blood. It was squirting. Well, I mean, obviously we see this happen again. Yes. Yes. Later. Yes, we do. But like... It was very weird. I was... I just didn't understand why I guess it was happening to like everybody. I think it's like, just because Lucifer was baptized and I don't know, that's not right. Well and I was also It was almost kinda like how with an exorcism, like when they break out like a cross. Yeah. Yes. And the demon essentially kind of like freaks out. Mm-hmm. So it was basically kind of like the And equivalent. it kinda went out into all the people. That's yeah. he projected was, maybe. Yes. Well, I thought this really doesn't have anything to do with the story, but like you see that, and like the woman is holding him, right? But then there's another woman there, and it's almost like I don't want to say so that was would have been the a baby, godmother. But they're like both yeah. tugging at him, and I'm like, whose kid is this? Well, the godmother would have been holding. <laughs> is that what happens during a baptism? Baptism, yes. and the woman that ran off was the mother. Okay, so the one that ran off holding him was his mother. Yes. Oh, okay. so that was Marion. Yes, Margaret. <laughs> no, okay. Mary. Got it. Got yes, it. got it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm a sinner, so I don't know anything <clears throat> about this stuff. Okay. So Aren't I apologize we all? <laughs> in advance. Um, okay. So I guess that's really it. And then you got 18 years later, right? So he's grown up. He has grown up, yes. Which was an interesting jump. Yeah. And his mother. They both look a little long in the tooth to have a kid. She looks. Period. Well, she looks distraught as fuck. Well, you have that little. Uh, you see the house deteriorating. Yes. And you, he blames the father blames the kid on the dissolution of their marriage yeah but it seemed like the father knew was a little more chipper than the mother well i also think the father was more in tune with what was going on like a good mother she was like no this is my son i'm gonna protect him he can't do anything wrong i mean for for everything that this movie does there are some things that Mm -hmm. i was like oh that was actually kind of like cool i did like the 18 year jump with showing the house kind of and everything kind of got darker and whatever and then like when he goes upstairs to get him like out of the bedroom and you see like a flash the the shadow like that's supposed to be andrew like essentially leaving the room because he comes back down and he's already at the table yeah yes so i was like well that was actually kind of like Mm -hmm. that was kind of cool but yeah, I I mean I kind of agree with you. I feel like the dad is a bit more like I don't I think he he feels a bit more like hopeful. Yeah, and maybe the mom's just given up at this point. <laughs> Which I mean, we obviously see her later where she's upstairs in that bedroom and he's like caring for her but she doesn't seem to like move, right? No, she's like paralyzed or yeah. something. I don't understand. But she got to smoke that cigarette. Yeah. Well, does chain she, smoke? Well, when they ha- they have an argument on on his 18th birthday and like the cake. Why they had to move that fucking cake off the table? That cake. <gasps> oh my god! When he said, "Let me go get a flashlight," and then he gets over there and he's like, "Hey, Marion, can you bring me the cake?" And I was like, "Why?" For what? Well, and when it falls, I'm pretty so sh- dramatic. So dramatic. It's They're like, on the carpet, scooping it up. So the cake wouldn't have like exploded <laughs> like it did. Like it fell to a bunch of pieces, and they're like, "Oh, just ravaging it to put it back on the plate." And I'm thinking, well, it was car. It was carpeted floor, was it not? Like I don't yeah. think it would have busted open like that. Unless it was a dry ass cake. Well, I was gonna say. <laughs> well, I was, mean, I don't. I don't really get it. But then they do make. Like a comment about, like, he's obviously a very good student. He's very smart. And I don't know. I feel like in that little bit of, you know, home life we see, it he doesn't seem like a bad kid at first. You know what I'm saying? No, he doesn't. Right? He just seems kind of odd. I don't know if he knows that he is Lucifer either. 
Like maybe he's oh, figuring out. He you think he knows? I feel like well, he's, yeah, he moved in the shadows to go down. I feel like he's discovering he that he had. To me, it was he's discovering that he has powers maybe, or something because it is his 18th birthday. But yeah. there's got to be some weird shit that's happened in between there because. Well, because at first I I wasn't sure if he did know, and I was like, because when I started the movie, I was like, oh. Is he going to become Lucifer like on his 18th birthday? Yeah. Like, I thought that was the thing. Yeah. I didn't realize that he was going to be born, Lucifer, yeah. born, like, yeah. whatever. But that also doesn't really make sense to me either, what y'all were just talking about. Cause I'm like, well, I mean, so yeah, he would have known to some degree as far as the shadow thing, but he does seem very clueless to. A lot of things that happen. He seems later. aware at points and then clueless yes. at other points. So maybe he has an idea, but then it's like for his 18th birthday, it's really like accelerating. So then it's maybe he the 18th birthday. Con- because. Or is it just hormones? <sighs> True. Well, I just. When I was watching it, I thought, okay, so he's basically Damien from The Omen. Like oh, how Damien sure. knew. But I don't think it was. <clears throat> I don't know. I just because you know in the in the omen like Damien's very smart and very yeah. like in tune with what's going on. So I don't know. And then the mother gets an iron drop. <laughs> she does. That's what on her head. Say. Gets an iron dropped on her head, and then she's like immobile for the rest of the movie. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well that well, wasn't. A- in fairness, in 1960, whatever this was, the irons were heavy. They were very heavy. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were. I but was it kidding. Did, but it didn't fall very far, so it's not like it picked up a whole lot of moments. Well, and why do you have an iron in the dining room? And why did it fall on her head to begin with? She fell on did, the floor because didn't she get slapped by the husband? He did slap her, but why did it like, fall? Period. I think he did that. I think it, he did it too. Oh, you think Andrew? Did yes. Yes. Because I mean, same thing with the the basketball thing later. But like, I think okay, he has a little. Bit of Income. well, and obviously we see in the very beginning of the movie with the other Lucifer that he can obviously move things because he took the oh yeah he killed himself he killed himself with yeah. that thing so I mean obviously we know he can like move objects yeah so he's basically like carry yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay this movie is very confusing it is weird right <laughs> yeah well because I, I <clears throat> not to like jump back to the beginning but when you see the guy that's supposed to be Lucifer. I when I saw it, I was like, "Oh, so is this a vampire movie?" Because he looked, because <laughs> his teeth, like it was very. I thought, "Wait, so maybe yeah, this is a vampire have. movie." Yeah. And to be fair, later on, you have all those people like biting people. So I'm like, I I don't know, I don't know. Okay, so let's like keep vampire it. mixed with Molly Shannon with some tree hugging <laughs> happening. I don't and, know yeah. what's happening. <laughs> So now I think we're kind of to the second, what I'm going to call the second arc, which... Well, we have have we talked about him at school yet? Well, that's what I was going to go oh, okay. into. Okay. I yeah, because really then we're a introduced to, to, obviously, a lot of I don't really people. have a lot to say on this. Then they there's a lot of shit that happens in the school. Okay. And I think the school dance is when the third arc happens. So there's a lot of shit that happens in the school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's so the second arc. Let's talk about... So we meet all these random characters. I don't know any of... That's what I'm saying. I don't know any of okay. their names. Do I know I... one person's name. And that's Landon. Okay. Right? Potato Face's boyfriend. <laughs> Look, I really hate to say Potato Face, y'all, but they did her dirty. Her makeup was terrible. And you, you could tell she didn't have great skin. There's Tony. It, is I, the asshole. Tony. Got it. Julia is the girl. Gabrielle this, or Gabrielle, whatever. Oh, her name's Potato Blake. Face. Yes. Potato Face. Okay. What's her name? Julia. Never would have guessed that. Um, hold on. And then Marie. I, Mark is her boyfriend. Mark is her boyfriend. Yes. Marie is. Isn't his last name Landon, though? Mark Landon? I think so. Okay. And they call him Landon. Well, they I say a lot they, of their last names. Yeah. But and then Marie is Queen B. Queen B. That's what I refer to. And then to Brenda her as. is it's that the, other one. The yellow ladies instead of the pink ladies. Yo, Which what a wish <laughs> for me. I saw those jackets and I was like, no. Well, not even that. Not. I was like, y'all couldn't have gotten possibly any more original. Literally, you put her with like the beret on and everything. I was like, this is literally like the pink ladies. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't, but really bad. Like, no personality. I mean, obviously, I don't remember any of their names. I just know Queen Bee. 
Um, there are a lot of characters that I didn't care about. Well, okay, so you say Brenda, okay? Mm-hmm. Brenda comes up later on, and we can talk about it when we get there. But when she comes back at the end of the movie, I was like, who is Brenda? <laughs> Well, all the girls kind of look alike in that group. They all got the frizzy hair. Well, not even that. And they're all brun- aren't brunettes. They all brunettes. They're all brunettes. Yeah. They all look the same. Not even that. This movie, it jumps around so much that like it's hard to know who is who, who's with who. Like, and then and then the, you've got the reincarnated characters on top of yeah, it. Yeah, like and then the, you've got like they seem to focus a lot on Queen Bee, which is Marie, and she's not, but really, she's hardly even in it. Yeah. So then, when you do show the other girls and her clique, you're like, "Who the fuck is this? Is she like part of them? I don't even know who this is." They all look the same. And then you also have Vaseline smeared on the camera, so everything's blurry, <laughs> which doesn't make it even easier. It's like that RuPaul yeah. season the first season RuPaul, one, yeah. <laughs> It season is. one filter. Yeah, it is. But, um, so, okay, well, so it's, let's let's try to keep it as whatever. What the guys? We'll uh-huh. talk about the guys. Okay. So you got Tony. Uh huh. Asshole. Yeah. Absolute worst. Yeah. I when he like, I mean, I thought for a minute when they first introduced him in the classroom. Because I kind of feel like that entire classroom scene was literally meant to introduce you to everybody. Oh, one, it was. one time. Yeah, that's all you get, and you're supposed to remember. Yeah, and but like, who acts like that in like high school, flipping off the teacher no and kidding. like getting up? Like, are you? I would have gotten. I mean, I don't. I don't know if they even do this anymore. But in my high school, if you like miss, like you would get a paddle with a fiberglass paddle. Oh, I would never. Now that's have probably that like way. child abuse. Now I don't know. But I didn't have that in high school. We did, and have this that was in the '60s. He would have gotten paddled. Well, not yeah. then. It's '81. Oh, at this point, it's '81. Yeah, because yeah, because oh, like he was because he's birthday. 18. Yeah. yeah, but I'm just saying, like, why then, in '81 were they wearing those jackets then? Like the girls? Yes, because they were cool. Well, they were the queen bees. <laughs> That's I'm, just, why. I'm even more confused now. <laughs> I mean, maybe they saw Greece in the '70s and thought. We want to. We, we want to be the pink ladies. We are the pink ladies, but we are going to call ourselves the queen bees. No, 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 no. She not, was just the queen bee. The other ones were the bees. Yes. Well, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. Yes, her jacket did just say the queen bee, and the other one said because hers bees. had like a little crown on it. Yeah. So was their mascot a bee? Were they the bee? Like why? What the bees? Yeah, like maybe the, the bitches. Maybe it, like queen yes. bitch. Like maybe that's what it was because she was kind of a bitch. bitch. Well, damn! I can't blame her. I feel her. like she if had I, to be a bitch if because I was she being was with treated that the way he was treating her. That's why I don't understand. It's, there's several times in this movie where he like jumps on her, or, like slaps her, and then moments later she's like, <laughs> and he's not even he is, remotely cute. He is, <laughs> no, he's by far the most unattractive male I think in this movie. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, God, it's so hard to stay on track because there's literally <laughs> there's, there's so much that happens. Um. So that one day at school, so I wrote in my notes, like there's an ice cream truck outside and she's eating ice cream before she goes to school. The queen bee, she's eating an ice cream cone. And I'm like, where the fuck do you, like what school has an ice cream truck sitting Oh, see, front? I thought they were at an ice cream store. No, and I think he, it was a truck. Oh, I thought like he a, picked her up at like an ice store. cream shop. Yeah, at 7.30 in the morning? What ice cream <laughs> shop is open at well, 7.30 in the morning? Maybe they were playing Dairy hooky queen. and not going in until 10.00. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I really just... It was definitely a shop because he did pick him up. Because, like... Pick her up from the yeah, shop. Yeah, I mean, he went and picked her up, like, at the Oh, thing. see, I thought it was, like, an ice cream stand or shop, like, close... Or truck. It may have been close by, but it was definitely, like, an ice cream shop. Okay. Well, I never had ice cream for breakfast. Look, you didn't saying. even know her name. So. I don't know. <laughs> I know. And you said it three times. But you have a brownie for breakfast. Huh? You have a brownie for breakfast. I did have a brownie for breakfast, but I my, that was at like, I don't know, noon. Um, okay. Um, can I ask a question? Yeah. So there's all that shit, and then there's gym class, right? I'm just yeah. curious. Did y'all get that sweaty in gym class? No. Because they are drenched. Well, let's be real. I didn't really participate in gym. Well, I so, didn't either. Dodgeball, but no, I didn't. Well, that was the most aggressive game of dodgeball I yeah, have ever seen. Yeah, but that's later seen. on. That's later on. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. But they're, they, they go to the showers 
because they don't really show gym class. It just oh, shows that them shower going scene. into the shower, right? At the beginning. And they're all very sweaty. And I just thought, what were y'all doing in gym class? I never showered in gym class. I never showered in gym class. I barely participated. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I mean, I was way too inferior to like, I, I hated dressing out. Yeah. I never wanted to do it. Like, I mean, I guess as the closeted homo in a southern town, like, I would go in there and I would, like, side eye and peek glances wherever I could. But that was, like, <laughs> it. I didn't want to participate, but. Which is exactly why you're leading the horror fried hottie section. I'm just saying. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. But, like, so, let, let's go into the shower. Okay. So. Were you expecting that much? Absolutely booty? not. I, I had said something to him before, and he got pissed at me when we were watching the movie. Yeah, he's like, just get ready for a small penis and bush. And I was like, please don't ruin it. Like, I want to go in as blind as possible when I haven't <clears throat> seen anything. Because this was a first view for me and Mike, right? Mm-hmm. Um, So, it's very reminiscent of, like, the Carrie locker room scene. Like, all these girls running around naked. But in this one, it's, it's guys, and they're in the shower. Um... So this is also going to bring me to the question, is this movie all that gay? Like, I don't know why it shows up on Queer Horror List. Because for me, I, I don't think it's that gay. Do you want me to tell I, you why I think it is? I think that scene is gay, right? Um, Which I do find weird. What did you say his name was? Tony? Mm-hmm. He's like taunting Andrew. Like, let's go on a date. Give me a kiss. And then he goes over there and kisses him. And I don't know any straight guy that would actually do that. Yeah. You know, like taunt maybe, but like to actually go over there and actually kiss him. And they have quite a little makeout session. And then Tony seems distraught. And I'm like, was this the kiss of death? Is he going to suck his soul out of him? Like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> but then you don't see Tony for a while. And I just, okay, is Tony fucked up from this? Then you see him and he's fine. So I'm like. Very confused. Did he like it? Did Andrew like it? Like, were they into it? Were the other guys into it? I was just really confused about the whole thing. I do get the carry similarities, especially with Andrew, like, standing there at the shower, very in his own world, that whole thing. Yeah, he was yeah. even kind of standing a little, like, feminine. Like he's whatever. more bullied because yeah. he's smart. And... But, like, yeah, yeah when... Tony came in there and they were like, didn't they like compliment like his hair? Yeah, he had beautiful hair. And like hair. all this stuff. And I was like, who does this? Like, that this was very out of the blue. It didn't seem almost, it didn't really seem like bullying almost. Not at first. Like, no, it, it wasn't necessarily complimentary, but it wasn't like whatever. So when he brought up the kiss thing, I was like, what? It almost just seemed normal. Like, I'm going to... It almost seemed, at first, like Andrew could have been a girl in that shower. And they were, like, trying to make a move on him. Like, that's what I felt like. Because it didn't seem weird that he was doing it. But I want to hear what you were going to say about why this movie's gay. Because... Well, when you were watching that scene, you didn't... What's his name? The bully? Tony. You didn't see him, like, trying to pull away and he couldn't pull away? Mm Mm-hmm. Did you see that? I mean, I did. Okay. And I also think if you look, they're like when they're kissing, it almost looked like his skin was getting kind of funny looking. Yeah. Which kind of made me think, That's is he sucking, the, sucking the, soul the soul out of him? So, to me, why this movie is gay is because we think about Christianity and sins. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be obvious that Lucifer would be gay? Because that is a sin, according to Christianity. I feel like Lucifer was like a free willing type of guy and would just fuck anybody, though. And that would be a sin. Like a vampire. And that would be a sin. Yeah. So I, I think w- I that's just... how the gay context comes up in this movie. I wasn't so confused as to Tony's reaction as much as I was confused about Andrew's. Like, I didn't understand why he was so, like, shook up from it. Yeah. Like, that was... Like, Tony, sure. Maybe he just experienced something that... Yeah. Whatever. Whatever the case may be. But Andrew, to be, like, laid out on the floor and, like, I had... I don't know. It he was got like, his first heart on. Yeah. I should just I mean, we call overacting, but... Yeah. Maybe. I just... I thought, like, 
I wasn't sure if it was overacting or is this like, is Lucifer experiencing something that Mm -hmm. his first heart on? Yeah. I mean, same sex attraction, but then we have those like, watch. Yeah. This is definitely Trinity Taylor's version of Lucifer (laughs) in this movie, right? That's, I mean, okay. Um, Really quick before we move on, because I mean, there's a lot more to talk about. There's so like, much that happens. As far in this as movie. like the acting in this movie, it's not great. Okay, that's all I really. Okay, continue. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's not great. <laughs> well, okay. I just wait. Are we already past the point where, like, he, he visits Potato Face in the car? Well, in bed, right? What well, no, I'm talking that? about before that. Is she having nightmares? Is this like well, she's foresight? Reincarnated, so I think she's like getting these visions. Is he right? raping her? Is she enjoying it? I I thought that I whole know. thing was a dream anyway. Yes. I mean, I think he came to her in her dream. Well, but but was it consensual sex or was he raping her? Yeah. Was this like a Rosemary's Baby moment or was it? I don't really. I didn't feel like it was rape. It didn't seem that rapey to me. Um, that rash on him. <gasps> Is that real? Because I couldn't I think tell. that's real. I think that's like I a thought, skin. Like, is that like maybe a birthmark skin. or something? Or is that something they added? No, I feel like that's... Him? Him. Like but he I feel had... like you don't see it later. Right? Or maybe you do. I think I you kind of do. He also had a lot of sores on his arms. So I thought, well, he's doing that Oh, see, too. I thought they were like big big moles that no. maybe he was born. So, I don't know. I... <laughs> I <think laughs> look, we're probably look, focusing on look, the wrong thing. We're, we're really like all over the place. But... I so the whole thing with her dream okay. with him going back to the point where he brought her that book in the car when you saw her hairy man arm <laughs> because I don't even remember what part you're talking about I know what part you're talking about because she left the book on her desk and he was the last one she's out of making the out with Mark in the car yes oh that's right and, and he takes it to her and he through the back window which isn't there yeah <laughs> like. Yeah, I don't know. But she touches him. Mm-hmm. And, and she has first. that vision. Yeah. Oh, okay. And yeah. That's, sex. that's what made me kind of feel a little less rapey about it. Because I think she's already... She already kind of knew that this was coming. But why would an archangel have premonitions about having sex with Lucifer? That doesn't make sense to me. Because they're all intertwined together. They were all... But they're brothers and sisters, technically. Yeah, but this was a different time, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... I, I just... and Okay, and then, so going on about the rash thing, too. I do think that... And maybe this is just my interpretation, but, like, we see later where, obviously, Lucifer is... I almost want to say it's, like, kind of like a decaying kind of thing. And I'm wondering if he like that's like like what a his precursor body to... is doing so you think that was makeup yeah. i thought see, it was makeup because i felt like i thought it was his real body later on and you don't really see that so i that's why i kind of thought have it was to do some makeup. research well, on that yeah. and the only reason i say that is because obviously we see in the very beginning we see the preacher the father or whatever come in there sees all those animals hanging around and we see later same things happening with Lucifer. To the other guy, yeah. And I think, because he's drinking the, the blood and all that stuff. We haven't really gotten there. But you know what I'm talking about. Um, and I think that that is kind of what keeps him... Refreshed? Yeah, like, I mean... <laughs> it's like his form of noxema? It's almost a little like a vampire. Yeah. If a vampire okay. doesn't drink blood... They start to then they look start a little decrepit. Cut. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. That makes... I could see that. But yeah, I just... When I saw it... Because it, it covers a lot of his back. Mm-hmm. I just thought maybe it was makeup. I didn't think it was him. Oh, see, I thought it was. That's but, scratch, though. On her. It just... Yeah. It, y'all, it looked like somebody put scotch tape on her back. Some latex? Painted it. No, scotch tape... <laughs> Painted it her skin tone and then took a red sharpie and just drew. Sc- that was terrible. The prosthetics in this uh, movie are terrible. I just I, didn't well, think if we want to talk about that, I mean, I feel like I can get like the really bad special effects with like you know the lights from the I don't know Glenda's magical wand. I don't know what the hell it is, but like that stuff. <laughs> the I can, processional cru- crucifix. Okay, that I thing. looked it up. That's what it's called. 
That I can know. Like that's fine. It's 1981. Like that's all forgiven. But you had better prosthetics in 1981 than what you see Some there. Some scotch tape. And, and then at the end of the movie, look, like, which we can talk yeah. about later as well. Okay. I I have to bring this up for a second. Okay. When what's his face? Is it Mark that breaks into the convertible? Whoever breaks into the convertible and he's smoking a cigarette. Mm-hmm. You could tell he wasn't smoking a cigarette. Did that bother you? It did bother me. Well, you because know you watch movies and you can tell that they're at least inhaling. You could tell he was just yeah. pulling into his mouth well, and cool, then blowing it like up. Like cool teenagers don't inhale; they just do that to look cool. And it did bother me. Okay, well, I'm sorry well, that that bothered you. I mean, I, mean, I did that when I was a kid. <clears throat> You know what else bothered me? A kid. The entire fucking movie is what bothered you me. Know, you know what else bothered me? Two Pump Tony, when he took her down into those little that little area, and yeah. they had their little Trist. quickie down yeah. there. And I actually wrote it down because she was like quick and dirty, just the way I like it. And I was like, same girl. But Two Pump Tony, <laughs> that was really what I got out of that. Two Pump Tony. Well, what's yeah. funny <laughs> is later on in the movie when he's got that gun... And this isn't, I don't like, Oh, and he, when he's mm. got the gun and he like probes her with uh-huh. it. I was like, first of all, very uncomfortable. Second of all, probably the best sex she's ever had because she's <laughs> definitely not getting it from his little, his little Peter. Peter? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So going back to the, the birthmark when he's in the bedroom or whatever, you know, he wears that cape. All I got was like Buffalo Bill, Bill vibes. I can see that. Would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. Like, that's what I got from that. Like, it was very... Where did he get that cape? I think he got it from... Props. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so then we can go... I feel like at this point, we need to talk about that second PE class. Dodgeball? Dodgeball. I yeah. want to say the PE teacher is doing the most. Like, he's going to give himself a heart attack. Whoa. He was... Come on! I was like, and within like thirty <laughs> seconds, he was drenched in full. That was the most well, I mean, honestly, bugging. you know what? If that was how their gym classes are all the time, maybe they were really sweating that. Maybe bad they were because he I, was like a drill sergeant. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Yeah, if my, my PE teacher was not like that at all, I wouldn't be doing shit. My PE teacher would just say, "Hey, run laps." I'd say, "Okay," and I'd walk laps. Exactly. That's like, how PE teachers were, but this maybe, one was crazy. Yeah, he took his job. Very seriously. He was a less than a minute. And why late. was he getting pissed off though? Like they were doing dodgeball. I think. I mean, I don't know. I mean, he was literally yelling at them, being like, "You're kill 54 him. seconds late." <laughs> he was like, "Kill him, kill him!" And I'm like, <laughs> "Well, you got your wish." But yeah, when he was like, "You're 54 seconds late," or whatever, do 50 push-ups and 50 sit-ups, and I'm like, "That's what I get for being less than a minute late." Yeah. yeah. No, thank you. God, Keith, you're late everywhere. How f- you would have like a thousand? I'd be in really good shape. <laughs> I'd be in really good shape. Um, and then he picks up the dodge, the ball. Yeah, and hurls it at Mark, Mark, and explodes his organs or something. So stupid. Well, I didn't really understand why, like Lucifer himself was getting so he was like worked shaking. up about yeah. dodgeball. The, like, well, just about that whole thing. Like maybe it was just the intensity of the PE teacher. Yeah, like maybe just the intensity of the situation was like getting to him, I guess. Uh-huh. But cuz yeah, when he obviously gets those crazy eyes going, which looks like red eyes oh, from a camera. He does get those contacts, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Snake eyes. But then he hurls the ball across. Yeah. First of all, how hard would you have to throw a ball? It's a dodgeball. Oh my ball. god. He didn't throw a concrete block at him. <laughs> like it was a And it like ball. impaled him to the bleachers. Yeah. yeah. And then the PE teacher is like very upset about it <laughs> and goes over to his body. You know, like he's crawling on the floor, isn't he? He's like, no, like crawling on his, like with his hands. Like he's not even moving his legs. He's just like pulling himself. Anyway, really dumb. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, okay, where do we go from here? Well, then Potato Face has those dreams julia julia potato i have to call her potato face that's what keith called her all last all night. night i was like i don't know what her name in my notes look right here potato face i put potato is face went pastor, to old lady's house I put, is the pastor reincarnated is that that's correct right so that pastor that we talk about Mm-mm. at the beginning Mm-mm. yeah that old man Mm-mm. that's not her who she's Mm-mm. supposed to be she's gabriel Mm, okay. Are the feminine version Gabrielle is what they call her, but Gabriel, 
and he's somebody else. He's Raphael. He's Raphael. And then well, then she's April O'Neil. <laughs> she comes in. <laughs> That's <with> Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all. Okay. Well. Okay. Where do we? Okay. Because Margaret, <laughs> Margaret is Mikhail or whatever. Yes. Margaret is Mikhail. Yes. yes. Mikhail Angelo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. And so Andrew is Shredder. <laughs> and no, the, that's Tony. Then the old preacher must be Splinter. Yep. Yeah. Who's Crane? Who? Oh my god. Crane. Crane. Who's Crane? The brain thing. Oh. Um That's Lucifer. Probably the PE teacher. It's a lot of right? aggression. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Anyway. So where are we going from here? <laughs> so Potato Face goes over to Margaret's house. Yeah. And they have their interaction. She's been drawn there. Yes, she's been drawn there. She's going to have a sleepover. It's very intense because she's like, who brought, who, who told you to come here? And she's like, that person. Margaret knew. Well, she just wanted her to say it because she wanted to know that it was actually her. Yeah. Yeah. So she, she needed, needed her to say. And then she say, makes her that best breakfast she's ever had in her life. But doesn't she spend the night over there? She does. She spends the night. And then she's like, I need to leave. They and paint each other's fingernails and. Read Bible verses. Bra- braid each other's hair. Yeah. yeah. Well, she should have brought some crest whitening strips because <laughs> Margaret's teeth were like... Yeah, but Margaret's an old lady. I will say this. Margaret doesn't care. No. She's I, out there pumping her well. Water. Yeah. I think everybody... Okay. So I will say this because I asked the question earlier about acting. I do think the woman that plays Margaret is the best actress. She's a great character she actress. She really is. She's really good in her role. You can it's tell not, she's had, had experience yeah, acting. Yeah, it's not like she's... It's not over the top, but I just, yeah, I felt like she was leaps and bounds better than everybody else in this movie. Which is I would probably agree. why they couldn't put her in, like, more scenes than she's in, because everybody else would look even worse. She would True. act around everyone else, yeah. True. She did her, she was, she was really great. But anyway, um, okay. And then oh Andrew God. kills a dog, lures a dog into a barn, Ugh. and kills him. Did anyone else feel like... The animal props looked very real. They looked very real. Very dog. real. It almost made me think that they used cadavers. The dog that he was like fucking with looked real, but the face didn't. It was very confusing to me because the dog had that tongue. I tried not out. to look. Honestly, I didn't it like makes that me. Part. No, I didn't either. I don't like when they kill animals in any movie. Honestly, but that was a bit more than I. <laughs> Good like well, yeah it was a little cute golden retriever like what are you doing i know he just wanted to play fetch they were playing and, yeah like i just feel like maybe because i looked at ryan actually at this point he actually sat and watched this with me yeah and i was like you know everything that's happening in this movie i cannot imagine that this movie was well received in 1981 <laughs> like it just yeah or in 2023 right um, okay. And then I think we kind of go into the third, third act. act. yeah. So, the church. Yeah. The church. I don't know what church it is, but the church decides to put on a play, The Passion of the Christ, I think. Oh, and it, honey, it's a hit. I mean, the whole town is there. Everyone around there goes to this play. <laughs> I just, I kind of, like, got a little giggle when they're, like, putting their chairs out, you know, because it's on the beach. Yeah. Which I will say... Wow, what a good idea to have a play like on the beach. I would go see a play on the beach. Not The Passion of the Christ, but I would go see a play. <laughs> you know, like bring hairspray to the beach. Yeah, I'd get into that. Um, but whenever the kids are sitting there and they're getting their chairs ready and the guy playing Jesus, I guess, walks through the oh, crowd they're all with like, his thorn yeah. crown on and they're like, Hi, Jesus. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't know why, but it made me giggle. Um, I mean, I think I'd rather die and exercise than go see that play. Well, I think the whole town was there, though. The whole town. So, we have the play. Uh-huh. Well, this is going on. Andrew is over at... Give me a second. The castle. The castle. The castle. But they actually... It has a name. Yes. Lawrence Bay House is what they called it. But it's... I will bring this up because it's a real place, and I've seen it on something before. So, he's kind of doing his Lucifer magic, and he summons Leviathan... Mm-hmm. And Beelzebub, and a bunch of undead people, and then some shit happens. There's a school dance that happens. Yeah, I was gonna say, was it? It seemed like maybe prom was going on, but they yes. don't ever say that. They're just all dressed. We just up. assumed it was prom. It looked yeah. like prom. We're gonna say They're it's all prom. Dressed up. 
Uh, can really quick the castle. You yeah. know, earlier they're they're doing like a tour or something, and they yeah. say they're going to tear it down and put a golf course there. And I thought, why? That's like a why beautiful, beautiful, like architectural place, and you're going to tear it down yeah. and put a golf course. Anyways, I just like that's very that's a very Nashville thing to do. I actually, felt like the castle looked very much like the how the castle in Rocky Horror. It kind of does, it doesn't it? Yeah, I just thought it was a cool. It, it was cool architecturally. Yeah. Like, why would you tear that down? But well, anyways. And you were just saying that. That What were you going to say about it? Because I actually read something too. Where Can we come really, back to that? Yeah. Can we come back to that? And so the prom goers, the bully, mm-hmm. his friends and Brenda and... The queen bee. Queen bee all decide all to the bees. <laughs> take a boat from a drunk person. A little tiny boat. And go... I'm surprised it didn't tip over. Me too. The whole time I, I thought that, I was like... There is eight people on that tiny little boat. It's basically a canoe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's a canoe. It is. I mean, it's, it's like a little canoe motorboat type. So they decide to go to the island where the castle is or the Lawrence house, whatever. and To sand and have sex and smoke. Drugs. Yes. And they're... Here's how I'm going to end it. Three become one. Uh-huh. And Tonight the castle and Lucy blow is up. Is the night where three become one? <laughs> That's all I could think of when I saw that. I, th- I thought of Spice Girls. Okay, so... Instead of two become one, three become one. Lots happening at the end of this movie, like the rest of the movie. Yes. But I want to make mention of this before I forget. They offer Andrew pot at one point towards the beginning. It may have been in the bath when they're no, in the No, it was shop. out of the car. Tony okay. offered it to him, yeah. And he said no, and he said why? Because it'll grow tits. Have you heard it? You'll grow Ooh. tits, right? I've never heard Do of that. Do you remember that part? Yes. So then later on, that was who, foreshadowing. Has, who has tits? Tony. Why? I don't know where they come from. I'm confused. <laughs> but he does. He has he tits. He opens his shirt. And... He has tits. And then... Um, okay, I was so that's... far disconnected by that point that I forgot... Like pure chaos. I forgot I that that had even happened yeah. or been said in the beginning of the movie. So I think we should start... Start with? The play. Yes. This church is putting on this play. Everyone in the fucking county is there because it's like the best... They've been doing it for 20 years? They, they said at one point they've been doing it forever. He yeah. said, um, it's a tradition. It was like yeah. since 1958 or something. Well, I'm glad you remember that because at that point I... Um, did you check out? I checked out a little <laughs> yeah. bit. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I'm um, pretty sure it was like 1958. And while that is going on, the dad is at the bar, drunk, screaming that his son is the devil. Yes. And, and they're then, like, calm down, Peter. You're just drunk. Well, right. yeah. okay... What's, what's the dad's name? I don't even... It doesn't matter. Anyways. Um, hold yeah. on. His name is Dad. No, like, I didn't never care mind. Oh, no, no, no. I think it was like... I think it was like Greg. Greg? Was it Greg? I'm pretty sure it was like okay. Greg. We'll call him Greg. So I said Peter. So one of the Brady Bunch guys. So yeah. That kind of goes <laughs> hand in hand with our intro. But anyway. Uh, so sticking with the dad thing before we get crazy again. So he goes upstairs and like kills... <gasps> The mom. Yes, why? Like where And they, they never go back to them. I don't know where that even no. came and from. And why kill her? She can't do anything anyways. She's been hit in the head with an iron and she just up there smoking cigarettes. So like why would you kill her? Yeah, yeah. I just didn't understand. Maybe because she birthed Lucifer. All I can think of is that she's like protective of him. Yeah, because it's her son. Yeah. As any mother would do. Yeah. And that's all I can think of. Well, well <laughs> they do, you can tell. I mean, there's not a lot that happens at the house, but you can tell. They do have I'm assuming a close relationship because he goes up and puts the cigarette in her mouth and stuff. So he's, he's still, I think he still cares for her. Yeah. Like, yeah. As like a caretaker. Even if he is Lucifer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But she birthed him. Whatever. (laughs) Take another drink. (laughs) But like, (laughs) um, but like, we didn't talk about this before, but like, we see that apparently, I guess the dad is like a postman. Yes. Yeah. So he he's friends with Margaret. House. And he's friends with Margaret. And he talks a little bit about like Andrew to her. And I. The guy I, in the beginning that gets convicted. Yeah, the he father. defends. The guy that's Raphael. Yes. Whatever. We see that weird scene of him in the prison where the guy steps on his hand. And, oh my God. Like. Such randomness. And the dad drives a bicycle. <laughs> that's how he delivers <laughs> his mail. Oh man, on a bicycle. But. Well, in upstate New York, that's how they deliver mail. Is it? Oh, it actually was no. upstate New York. It was too. upstate New York. Yeah. Okay, but I could understand it if it was like a neighborhood. She lives out in the middle of nowhere. 
It's like rural. Right. Well, people in the country have to get mail. Uh, on a, okay, anyways. <laughs> Again, we're talking about the wrong things. <laughs> um, okay, but yeah, so dad, dad killed the mom, which I thought was so out random. of nowhere and unnecessary. Yeah, uh, totally unnecessary. But I think at that point, we obviously saw that, one, he's probably a lush because he's at the bar, mm-hmm. like, drinking drunk as shit. And they kicked him out, and I think that he's just unhinged at this point. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he killed himself after he killed her. I'm surprised yeah. they didn't show that, to be like, honest. Like, I wouldn't be surprised, and maybe that's why we didn't see them after. Yeah. yeah maybe we're just supposed to assume that he kills himself afterwards. Um, <clears throat> okay, so then we've got the demons slash zombies mm-hmm. that, come, yes. that come out and attack all the kids. That Andrew... Right? conjures up i don't know what you call it okay so this is where i I'm a little <laughs> where the movie it. turns into night of the living dead yes it's a totally yes. different movie at this point but um okay so when so i guess tony and queen b they and, go like, downstairs or something right because they're in a they're, they're, on they're a st- all in different places they're there's a, a couple in a puddle of water well they're in a fountain they're like near a whatever they're in. But anyway, no, I'm talking about a couple. The That's ones a, that got that were in the water. Yes. Out oh, stuff. like the swimming hole. Or yeah. something. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but Tony and Queen B are like about to get attacked. Right. <laughs> and they come and grab her and she's like, help. And he's, he's just, just like, like <laughs> and then <laughs> runs up the stairs and he's like, Brenda, we have to go. And I'm like, Brenda, <laughs> you this left- is when I was like, who is Brenda? <laughs> And I'm like, why would you leave her down there? You could have helped her. They weren't, like, fast. Like, they just yeah. grabbed her. Like, all you had to do is jerk her up really quick. But instead, <laughs> you're like, what do I do? Let me go save Brenda, who's up by the fountain with her. Uh, I don't know. With a bunch of dead people. Yeah, she was just chilling with the dead people. <laughs> she was, like, Well, was let's be real. Brenda was very traumatized. <laughs> she didn't know what was She going just on. sat there. <laughs> but yeah, I literally, when he did that, I was like, he straight up left her <laughs> yeah, ass. He did. Like, you... He's At that point, dog. I really was like, I really hope this fucker gets his. Yeah. So when and not he, a, oh, not only did he get boobs, but he got his. Yes, and he gave it to himself. <laughs> Just when he opened it. Well, he got like, another kiss. Huh? Him and Andrew kissed again. Oh, they did. They did, and then he was like, "I can't be gay," and killed himself. Did he? Oh, he did kill himself. Yeah, I he think it was the, funny when he was like falling down, and they had like his boob and nipple like <laughs> hanging out because they were like, "Let's not forget, <laughs> Tony boob. has boobs now." And once again, Brenda just sits there with her head down, and she's like freaking out. I mean, I'm saying what? Who is Brenda? <laughs> it was just so weird to me when he was like, "Brenda, oh. let's go." I'm like, "Is this a new character?" <laughs> Has she been in this? I don't know. Oh. Okay, so and so when did like even that, before that though the play's going on? <gasps> oh yes, and, yes. and we Jesus more, actually gets crucified, and we get more ketchup packets. Yes, and everyone starts bleeding in the front row. What I loved about that scene is people were like fucking freaking out and running away. Mm-hmm. And did anyone else see how people were trying to jump over the fence? Yeah, but there was a fucking <laughs> road right next to the fence. Well, I mean, some they probably felt like. I, they're everybody's going towards that opening in the fence so they're yeah. like oh i'm going over the fence i can get there quicker probably but, but you notice like some people are bleeding some aren't and, and then the people centers. start getting electrocuted and then i struck with that's lightning what i said i was like so maybe are the sinners the ones that oh. are bleeding and you know the pure one because you don't really see any kids that were bleeding it was mostly like i think well, it'd be good god opposite. if that's the case then the people in the church in the beginning are all sinners yeah I think it would be the opposite, though. If Lucifer's making that happen... So maybe the pure people... Are being... Tortured? Tortured. And the sinners are... But don't you think he have a connection, though, with, like, the sinners? Because they're his children? I don't know. I'm just making stuff up at this point. (laughs) There was a lot of ketchup and... I mean, that... The crucifixion scene, that was when I was like... "Mm, I'm pretty sure that this movie would not have a... Didn't someone have foresight and say something? Margaret. Yeah. Margaret was like, something bad's going to happen tonight. Yeah. She you did. can't put on the play. She did. She knew. Yeah. Margaret's the only one in this movie, even though she's kind of crazy in her own right. Like she Well, that's her husband, though, right? Her who? brother? Her brother. Okay. Her brother. Yeah. Her brother. Who I thought was Potato Face. Reincar- I thought he reincarnated to pe- Potato Face, but I was wrong. It was a whole different archangel. Yeah. I don't know. Um... So, 
I do like the chaos at the end of the movie. It reminds me a little bit of like the Day of the Locust. Oh, know? at the, like the at end. The end. It um, def- definitely I does. I do. I thought that. I don't want to say the whole ending. No, the whole ending of this movie was not great. The play part. But the play part where every, like, the chaos is ensuing on the beach. Like, I did enjoy that. That kind of, like, reeled me back in just for a little bit. Um, until I blacked out again. But. Also, what happened? I'm just sitting here thinking about that scene. Because what happened to Father Daly, the other. At one point, you see him kind of, like, in a daze walking through the town. Because I remember it was him and then two other people, and the other two people went out of frame, and it was just him, and then it's the last you see of him. Are we just to assume that maybe he died? He got away. No, he got away. Oh. He definitely got away, and I think he was in shock. Because you see him for a brief moment walking well, through town. because he's after probably like, oh, shit, Margaret was right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. so I think it's safe to, like, all this chaos happens, and then you've got Margaret and Potato Face that go to the castle. Well, the they, cops, well, they still the a boat cops first. pick they, him, pick them up first. Yeah, don't they steal a boat, though? They don't steal a boat. They get the drunk man to give them a boat, right? They try to take a boat. The cops come. Oh, okay. And take him away. And then all the shit happens. It's a play, and the cops get distracted and have to go to the play. And then they go and steal a boat. And go to the castle. And go to the castle. With Glenda's magic wand. Yes. yes. I was going to say, because she stopped and picked that up at some point. Yeah. In the Naturally. midst of all the You got to pick up Glenda's wand. <sighs> okay. And well, then the breasts happen. Then the breasts and happen. And then I say, uh, Andrew comes out looking jo- like Jabriath. Which well, neither of you are going to know who is. I don't know, but all he was missing was like a brooch and some clip-on earrings, and he would have looked like my great-grandmother. <laughs> well, I Here, also... Hold it up. That's Jabriath. He's a gay singer from the 70s. Oh, no. And it totally reminded like me... Bowie. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. Well, let's talk about his hair, because he's got super straight hair, and then the crazier he gets, the curlier it gets. You know, because at the end, he's got really curly hair. Again, it doesn't really matter at this point, but... And he has on a robe at this point. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He yeah. looked like my grandmother. He's... I also just didn't, like, I liked it, but I didn't understand it. The fact that it's literally, like, a repeat of the exact events from the beginning of the movie. It is. And I was like... Same I mean, place and everything. Right. And I didn't yeah. understand. I thought that was an interesting, like, thing to do. But I was like, but why? Yeah, because they don't ever mention, like, is that where it's supposed to happen? Like, right. Or is it just coincidence? Probably coincidence, but... I don't, I don't know. know. That whole it's I do all think confusing. the end though, the very end, and you've got like the rainbow beams of color. I was like, oh, that's why this is a gay movie. <laughs> but um I mean you know, that's pretty much it. Y'all, I feel like we went all over the place, but it's so hard to stay focused. But this movie, movie is like all over the place. This movie is all it over, is the, place, all over though. the place. I know, but Margaret makes him say the lord's prayer yes and then she gets her neck broken and then potato face comes in and saves the day Ugh. which literally i was least favorite character i know i was and honestly then become one by the end of the movie i was like well damn now i kind of felt bad that like margaret was the only one i cared about yeah and she, she should have been then, i felt like she should have been the one to end it like kill potato face yeah she didn't even know what she was doing. No. Or what she was if experiencing. If it weren't for Margaret, no. she would have had no idea. No. So. But now, do you want to talk about the And then the castle oh. <laughs> and Lucy blow up. So, I remember watching back in the day, as we were watching this movie, watching a program on Discovery Channel about this castle on this island. And this happens to be the castle from that documentary on Discovery Channel that they filmed at, and it's actually called the Bolt Castle, and it was built by millionaire George Holt back in the day. Well, where's it at? It's, it's, in, it's in New York. York. It's in New York. Yeah. Yeah, because I saw where the director, whatever, Frank La Llorona, he he had apparently been on like a boat or something and saw the castle from afar, and that was what sparked his... like. I guess where those weren't the, set pieces. The that idea for the movie is all there, and he went and talked to his brother, and I guess that's where they kind of like came up with the idea for the movie and just oh, all that. Yeah. But I mean, it makes for a good backdrop. I mean, it, it does. It, it does. was a really pretty yeah place. I mean, but yeah, so that's kind of cool. 
Yeah. I would have loved to have been in, like, the brainstorming room for that. Like, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to kill this guy with a dodgeball. And then the other guy's <laughs> going to get boobs. <laughs> and then we're going to really crucify Jesus. Yes. I don't oh know. I mean, kudos to them. That guy did look like Jesus. He did look like he Jesus. He did. Yeah. I like that they didn't make him, like... Because, you know, Jesus is supposed to kind of be, like, skinny and scrawny and kind of, like, gangly looking. Because, mm-hmm. you know, he fasts a lot. He's Jesus. So, and he walks a lot. But <laughs> on water, yeah. Wait, did Jesus walk on water, or was that somebody else? Oh, that it was, was Jesus. Jesus. Okay, <laughs> y'all. I'm telling you, I don't know anything about the Bible. I don't know why I know all this. <laughs> but um, yeah. No, I mean, go Jesus. Um, yeah. is there any trivia? Like, do y'all did y'all pick up any trivia? Other because than... I feel like at this point, like we're pretty much there's not much else to talk. Well, no. I mean, I feel like we could probably talk about this movie. For all I can say about but... more about the castle, and this is Mike's segment, but. George Bolt built it for his wife, mm-hmm. and then she died, and he stopped building it. Well, that's fine, because I didn't research the castle. And then someone, the state of New York, that's not who it is, but some entity in New York bought it for a dollar. Um, I mean, there really wasn't a whole lot for this one, but some just basic things. Apparently, the school that was the high school was actually Frank's high school. Oh, okay. So, like, that's why he chose to kind of do it there. And all the extras and the the high school scenes or the school scenes were actually, like, all students. So, that's okay. kind of cool. I mean, that would be kind of cool if, like, your school was, like, used for a movie. Yeah, they were like, hey, we're going to shoot some scenes here. If you yeah. want to participate, just kind of show up. Yeah, and you're just an extra in the background. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. But, um, and then also, <clears throat> the guy that played Lucifer apparently did the makeup work on the film, which is He did a really good job. <laughs> which really is good interesting. Job. Um... And then I thought this was funny. Apparently, painted cornflakes is what they put on the oh, zombies. Painted cornflakes. Mm-hmm. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, other than that, there wasn't really a whole lot that. So like, they just went to the crab table and said, "Yeah, grab some cornflakes." All right. I think the only other trivia is Andrew, the the actor that plays Andrew, is sisters is the brother of who played Nellie and. The little, show that you're your little house, oh, little yeah, house on the prairie. Oh. They're, they're brother and sister. What's Arngram? Her? Yeah, oh, okay, so yeah, I mean, that makes sense because her name's Allison Arngram. Yeah, oh, so they well, they kind of <clears throat> you, th- you say it, and now you think about it like they do kind of favor mm-hmm. each other. Yeah, interesting. Well, I prefer her over him. Yeah, I prefer Little House over this movie. Yes, <laughs> but like, <laughs> me too. Um, so horrified hotties. What are we thinking for this one? None. No, you got to pick somebody. I feel like for me, I would pick Mark. Mark is the oh, my heart. I would mark. have to pick Mark Because I too. thought he was a pretty good looking guy. I mean, he has very little to do with anything in this movie. He's just like <laughs> basically there to take a dodgeball to the chest and explode. But I thought he was cute. I'd have to say Mark too. I mean, I could probably pick one of the random guys out in the locker room. <laughs> yeah. But... Like most people in this movie, I didn't know his name either. Yeah. So we're gonna go I, with Jesus. I guess <laughs> I guess Mark would probably be the the common like the one for all of us. Yeah, Mark. You of, go, Mark. I mean, and our horrified hotties. Do they always have to be guys? We can no. pick girls too. Yeah, right? we can pick. I mean, I'm not picking potato. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> no, and it was Queen B. Like all those girls were just very. Basic, uh, yeah, basic look. I, I don't want to say they were, they weren't ugly girls. They were just very basic looking. All looked the same. Um, yeah. So I do want to bring this up yeah. before we go into the next segment. I want to know how this low budget movie afforded the songs that they had. They had Ramones, the Talking Heads, the B fifty twos, the Sex Pistols. How did this mm-hmm. movie afford that? Well, to be fair, they shot on location, so that's not very expensive. They didn't have to build any sets. And they use cornflakes for prosthetics. So I think <laughs> there's your answer. I don't know about that. Okay. I mean, it costs a lot, though, to get, like, the rights to use... The licensee to the real, songs. Like, real music. Yeah. Which I honestly was sitting there at one point, and I was like, I mean, that's cool that y'all got the rights to use this music, but y'all could have used it in better places. There was a few times where they played the songs, and I was like, what the fuck is this song Why playing is, right now It was now a for? heavy punk rock soundtrack. Yeah. And I'm like, this isn't a punk rock movie, so... No. This isn't Return of the Living Dead. No. No, but it was a little bit of Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Definitely the curse of Lala Grovia. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say his name. All right, so um, before we move on to our final thoughts, I think it's time for everyone's favorite segment, mm-hmm. Horror Fright Theater. Mm-hmm. Mike? I don't know whose favorite segment this is. I mean... Everybody. Look, not. y'all, this was a very rough movie. Mm-hmm. It was a rough movie to get through. It was a rough movie to talk about. And honestly, it was so disjointed and all over the place. It was a little hard to pick something that was... Honestly, anything that would make sense. Mm-hmm. So... The scene that we're doing, it's pretty short, not going to lie. But it's so, okay. If it's short, we're, we're actors. We're going to read the lines and we're going to really, um, really, what's the word I'm looking for? We're really going to just give it fucking give it our all. <laughs> yeah, we're going to give it our all and we're going to make the most out of what we got. Well, that's really good because I actually forgot until just now that I didn't pick your character yet. So, oh. um, we're just gonna. This is gonna be a very winged situation right now. <clears throat> I'm obviously gonna narrate like I always do, but so to kind of set the scene, we are. Um, it's going to be after the dog thing where they're on the beach. It's Margaret, Father Daly, that weird ass guy that we didn't even talk about. The one he was the mayor. Okay. Talking to them. When he, we're, Margaret's trying to get him to stop doing the play. Okay. okay. So, which now this is even funnier because we did not talk about that scene at all. It's okay. <laughs> but We're going to talk about it now. Yeah. <laughs> we're not, not only we're going to talk about it, we're going to reenact it. So, um, let's see. The characters. Margaret, Father Daly, the mayor, and that, and Dick. Dick. So, who. Oh, I remember. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I remember now. He was like a reporter. Yes. Okay. So, uh, let's just, I'm just going to, we're just going to throw it just out here. Just throw it out there. So, you go ahead and do Father Daly. Okay. You want to be Margaret. Okay. I, I can just see it in your face. Yeah. Okay. You're dying. You're and chomping then, <laughs> at the bits to be Margaret. Um, I'll do the mayor and somebody has to be Dick. But I talk to Dick, so which one do you want to be Dick? I'll be Dick. You're going to be two characters? Oh my god, Margaret yeah. Dick. Margaret Dick. Okay. Now, Michael. <laughs> yes, Keith. Going to get an award. I really want this to be the horror fry theater for you. To show, Case. My range. What you got. Yeah. <clears throat> um, like I said, obviously, I will um, narrate this. So, we ready? Yeah. Okay. Gangrene. Take her. Greetings, maniacs and madmen. This is Dr. Gangrene, physician of fright and Nashville horror host. Coming up next is everyone's favorite segment, Horror Fried Theater. Grab your popcorn and refreshments, pull up a slab, and get ready for the madness. The scene opens on a beach where we see Margaret following Father Daly in a very worried demeanor attempting to get him to stop the passion play. Father Daly isn't very receptive. I'm extremely busy, Margaret, but I would appreciate it if we could discuss this at a later date. Margaret grabs Father Daly and turns him to face her. There's any time. Now may be too late. Hmm. Excuse me, Margaret. Father Daly walks off and leaves Margaret looking defeated. Father Daly walks towards the building where production of his play has started, looking very similar to a drama club production with lighting kits all over and several people that are piecing together various sets for the production. Father Daly walks up and is greeted by a very enthusiastic individual that wants to take a minute of Father Daly's time, and once again, Father Daly appears too busy to take part in any of it. Oh, Father Daly, how's it going? Well, as you can see, everybody's hard at work. Make sure that's all... What? Make sure (laughs) that all's going well for tonight. Well, I don't doubt for what it will go smoothly. You know, I'll be here tonight along with Margaret and the children. We haven't missed a performance since 1958. That was the year we moved here from Detroit. Mayor looks to a man standing in front of him and Father Daly with big hair and even bigger glasses. You know Detroit, Mr. Walbacher. Oh, yes, yes. I covered the Otter Workers track there last year. Dick walks up. (laughs) Dick walks up and gets in between Father Daly and the mayor. Father Daly, this is Dick Walbacher. Dick, you don't mind my calling you Dick, do you, Dick? <laughs> no, that's fine. Dick and Father Daly shake hands. Mr. Walbacher? 
Well, Dick is with the Bennett News Service Agency, and he'd been interested in talking to you about the show and then writing an article for syndication. Right, Dick? Right. Dick goes to walk away from the mayor and Father Daly. Mayor motions for Father Daly to follow him as Dick is talking. The mayor tells me you've been producing this play every summer since 1940. Well, actually, since 1948, my church and the surrounding Christian churches, well, we'd gather our technical and creative resources together. Well, we produce our own version of the Passion Quest. Oh, it's remarkable, isn't it? (laughs) Well, it's one performance only. People come with their families, they bring blankets and foods and watch the play unfold. I guess it's called a gesture of faith on the part of the observer. Uh, Time for reconciliation of the Christian ideals. They're interrupted by Mike, one of the individuals working on the production. Excuse me, Father, it's time to run those light cues. Uh, Good, Mike, I'll be right with you. Oh, please, don't let me keep you. I'll continue to look around if that's all right with you. Dick shakes Father Daly's hand. Feel free. Goodbye. As Dick walks off, the mayor follows him and leaves Father Daly by himself. Margaret's standing close by and sees when they leave. She then runs up to Father Daly again, begging and pleading. You must listen to me. Okay, we're going to try that again. Do it again better. (laughs) You can do better. Gusto. Yeah, she's desperate. (laughs) You must listen to me. Okay, one more time. Third time's a charm. <laughs> I'm really putting you on the spot. Let's do it. You must listen to me. Margaret, please. You must stop all this now. Cancel the play. You must be joking. Arthur, I've never been more serious. Something terrible is going to happen. I can feel it. In his journal, Tom mentioned... Look, I have had it, Margaret. Tom is dead and buried. Now the good Lord has seen to that. This conversation, Margaret, has ended. End scene. So this is Dr. Gangrene saying goodbye and thanks for joining us here at Horror Fried Theater. See you on the next episode of the Horror Fried Podcast and be sure and join me every Saturday night for Dr. Gangrene Sanitarium. Saturdays at 9 p.m. on Nashville's NECAT Channel 9 and simulcast on the Kneecat Roku channel and drgangreen.com. And as always, remember to stay mad. <laughs> okay, so what was your inspiration for Dick's voice, Michael? <laughs> it just came to me. <laughs> he was a very soft-spoken okay, reporter. So one thing, as we were reading this... There was a mic... Well, that, I forgot about that part. But I was like, well, I'm fucking Mike, so I guess I'll just just be Mike. However, why does it clearly say that 1958, and then he turns around and says that they've been doing this since 1948? Well, like much of this movie, it doesn't make any sense, okay? Um, That was, I'm just saying, that was really funny. That's the... Most soft-spoken reporter I've ever heard of in my life. He's a soft-spoken reporter. What can yeah, I say? Good job. You really took your liberties with that. Whatever. I enjoyed it. <laughs> You're such um, a jick. Okay, so it's time for our final finger licking thoughts. Here at Hard Fried, we rate our films using the heat scale of Nashville's famous hot chicken on a scale of one to five. No spy smiled, medium hot, and Nashville hot. Michael, why don't you go first? I give this a two. A two. Yeah. Okay. Tell I me mean, why. it's okay. It's not great. the The soundtrack's pretty good. Yeah. I enjoy that. Okay. That's Are you it. falling asleep over there? No, I'm not falling asleep. <laughs> He's drunk as a skunk. Anyways, a two. A two. Okay. I'm actually a mild two, so yeah. uh, I'm a two. It, it. It was just a little too all over the place for me. It was. It was a little too disjointed. Like just when I felt like I might start to get into it, mm-hmm. it was like let's just flip over here and then of course the whole thing where i was like i didn't even know who anybody was for like 45 minutes like i it just all of that that was a lot so for me yeah it's gonna be a mild whoo y'all okay well you're more generous than i am i'm gonna give it i'm not gonna give it i'm giving it a 1.5 like it is on the verge of no spice and mild for me because like I said, at one point, I just kind of zoned out. And I was like, I don't even care anymore. I'm just trying to get through it. Um, but I would give it a one, honestly, because I just didn't like it. But I'm giving it the point five because I do like the scene at the end. Like, there are some good scenes in it. Mm-hmm. I think all the characters are terrible. Um, 
I'm just going to give it a 1.5. Do you like it better than the Beyond? Um, well, here's the thing. At least the Beyond, I feel like... So, you know, if this is your first time joining us, the Beyond we covered last season, and we didn't really like it. Um, but I feel like at least the Beyond is, like, when it's exciting, it's exciting. Like, this was really boring in some spots, and I was like, come on with it. I even wrote in my notes at one point, can we kill some people? Like, because this is just obnoxious at this point. That's an interesting question, Michael, because for me, was this ew, worse? This was better for me. This really? one was better? <clears throat> and But I just really didn't like the Beyond. So, yeah. yeah. But like this one, maybe it was because it was like, maybe the music like did it for me a little bit more. The fact that it was kind of like, 80 I, I like those like old 80s movies that are kind of set in like high school ish yeah. and like that kind of stuff yeah so like that appeals to me I guess more even if the story sucked because like I didn't like the whole like not knowing who Archangel Body. was in who yeah. and like whatever I think this is my thing a movie like the beyond like for me I had no idea what was going on like I just it was way over my head I guess but I don't think they were trying too hard. And I felt like in this movie, they were trying really hard to make it make sense. And it just didn't. You know what I'm saying? Like they were trying to be really smart about the way they did things. But it fell flat because you're just left confused. Again, we didn't know which Ninja Turtle wasn't (laughs) happening. Which person. Like we just didn't know. Yeah. So that's where I landed on one point. Because last night after I watched that. (laughs) Woo! Got choked up. (laughs) Um, I'm so sad. Um... Well, after I watched it last night, I was like, oh, this is a one. I hated it. But I didn't hate it. I mean, there were parts that were enjoyable. So I'm, I am I can't just do a one. I got to go 1.5. But I still didn't. And it got a giggle out of you. It did get a giggle. The point five was for the giggle. Let's be <laughs> You know what? It got a giggle out of I'm going to go 1.75 as my final score. <laughs> 1.75. All right, gang. We'd like to thank you so much for joining us. If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and rate the Horror Fried Podcast and catch up on all our previous episodes on your favorite streaming service. Links are available on our Instagram page. Once again, we'd like to thank our friend Dr. Gangrene for hosting Horror Fried Theater this season. Y'all can find him on Instagram, YouTube, and his website at drgangrene.com. We also want to give a big shout out to our friend Clark for creating an incredible piece of artwork for us that you may have seen floating around on Instagram. He's extremely talented, so please be sure to follow him on Instagram as well at Robbie.Clark87. Buy his t-shirts, which can be found by visiting the Dolls of Horror podcast Instagram page at the Dolls of Horror, and give the dolls a listen while you're there because they're a lot of fun too. Now it's time to swap spit and hit the road. Until next time, remember, there's not a pot too crooked that a lid won't fit. Bye, everyone. Bye, Jesus. Remember the promise. (laughs) Bye.